Hey, drop a like on this video if you're a fan of Pawn Stars, join the notification squad by subscribing and hitting that bell notification on, but also, don't forget to comment down below saying I subscribed to enter our monthly shoutouts, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Hope you enjoyed the video. After 9 years of watching Pawn Stars, it would be easy to believe that Rick and the guys from the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop never make any bad deals. However, sometimes it turns out that not every deal is a good deal, and since Rick is a human being too, he is not faultless. From bad calls, to stolen and overpaid items, here are 10 times Rick Harrison got scammed badly. Everybody knows that Rick has a soft spot for guitars, just like he has it for cars, and in this pick, he was scammed by his so-called buddy expert right behind his back. One time, a man came to the shop with a 63 Olympic white Fender Stratocaster, claiming that it belonged to the legendary Jimi Hendrix. Rick got all excited, saying that it will be the coolest guitar ever to walk into the shop. To be on the safe side, he called the local expert Jesse Amoroso of Cowtown Guitars to appraise the item and confirm its authenticity. The guitar checked out, as it had scratch marks of the rough-riffing left-handed guitar player and all the accompanying documents and photos, along with the serial number. Guitar expert Amoroso concluded that its price could go up to a million dollars at auction. While the seller wanted $750,000 for the guitar, Rick offered four fifty dollars instead. The seller wasn't interested and left, even though Rick eventually offered $600,000. In the end, the guitar found its way back on the market thanks to Cowtown Guitars and Amoroso who managed to strike a deal with Rick's customer. Ever since he saw Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory at a young age, Rick has been an avid fan of the movie's title character. The man that came to the shop carrying the props that were used in the movie, a golden egg, a golden ticket, Willy Wonka's hat, Wonka bars, and most important of all, the everlasting gobstopper, knew this, and Rick could barely contain himself. The man took advantage of Rick's love for the movie and made it crystal clear right away that Rick is going to have to pay up if he wants just one item from his collection, probably referring to the Gobstopper, the item he knew Rick would want the most. Reliving childhood memories, Rick stepped out of his usual character and immediately struck a deal with the man without even trying to haggle and without investigating the authenticity of the items. Rick bought the Gobstopper believing that the ultimate Willy Wonka prop would bring customers to the shop, but at the end of the day, he got played as the price of the Gobstopper actually ranges from $20 to $40,000. One time, a woman came to the gold and silver pawn shop with a collection of pretty valuable gold coins and apparently got herself a neat deal as she sold them for about $12,000. Later it turned out that the coins were not hers at all, but her uncle's from whom she had stolen the coins. Not only the man got robbed, but he also had no chance of getting them back since Rick and the gang decided to melt the coins down to make more money from actually selling the gold than they had initially spent on the coins. The story comes with another twist and another revelation since it turned out that the gold coin collection was actually worth about $50,000 as it contained rare coins like a 1903 Sega Dance $20 gold piece, silver Morgan coins from the 1880s and contemporary one ounce American Buffalo gold pieces. While the woman was caught and served a sentence for theft in the end, Rick got scammed. Explaining how it came to melting the coins in the first place, Laura Hurlovich, the spokesperson of the shop, said, If the grader is not someone we trust, the cases are cracked open and the coins are sent out to be melted down. That was the case here. In Corey's big play from season 5, an elderly man came to the shop with a Wells Fargo strongbox from the 19th century. The strongbox contained two antique prison ball and chain sets that he believed originated from notorious Yuma and Folsom prisons. Rick immediately noticed that the chains have been electrically welded, which meant that they are fake, since the blacksmiths who forged the chains in the 19th century did not have electric welders. The balls that the man brought were fake as well, since they had names of the prisons on them, which wasn't the practice back in the day. The owner immediately got pretty defensive, but despite this and his own obvious doubts about the item's authenticity, he decided to buy the box for 450 bucks, probably hoping to make at least some profit. His plans came to a halt with the arrival of expert Mark the Beard of Knowledge Hall Patton, who called the box a complete piece of fantasy and told Rick that it was one of the most faked items out there. Purchasing stolen items has always been problematic and risky for fast-moving pawn shops, and the gold and silver pawn shop is no exception, because things move rather quickly due to the shop's fame and popularity. 
Still, these things can happen, and when a man came to the shop looking to sell a pair of high-quality diamond earrings, Rick was naturally curious about how they came into the seller's possession. The man was able to produce a receipt and had all the right answers to Rick's questions, and the deal was struck at $40,000. However, the police came to the shop three days later, and it turned out that the earrings were stolen. The gold and silver pawn shop promptly returned the earrings to their rightful owner, and even though the thief was arrested, the money was lost. In the season 6 episode Say It Ain't So, Rick made another ill-fated gamble without consulting his expert buddies when a seller came into the shop carrying a book that had supposedly been signed by baseball legend Shoeless Joe Jackson, since Joe Jackson's signature is one of the rarest ones to find. Throughout the appraisal, it seems that Rick followed his heart rather than his mind as he couldn't have been more excited. Because Jackson was illiterate, his signature is one among the most forged sports signatures in the world. Disregarding his own reservations and skepsis, as well as questionable certificate of authenticity, Rick eventually shelled out $13,000. It was only after spending all that money that he decided to pay his book expert Rebecca a visit. Rebecca informed him that the signature was most likely fake, so Rick went for a second opinion from an authenticator who backed Rebecca's claim, saying that the signature is not only a fake, but also a ridiculously bad one. In the second season episode titled Helmet Head, a customer came in bringing a 1964 Austin Healey Sprite, a small British sports car designed to fit in bike sheds. The owner said that he paid about $1800 for it, and that the car was in a very good condition overall, but just needed some minor tuning up. Naturally, Rick wanted to take the car for a spin, but surprisingly, the car just didn't start. Still, in spite of that, being a car buff that he is, Rick decided to make the man an offer since Austin Healey's are popular collector's items in the US. Even though the owner was looking to get at least $10,000 for it, Rick managed to lower his initial asking price and eventually bought it for just half of that. It seemed like a good deal at the time, but Rick's plan to resell it at a higher price fell through when he took the car to his friend looking for a simple fix. Instead of the three or $400 tune-up that Rick had been hoping for, he was shocked to learn that it would cost him about $6,000 to fix the car, a whole grand more than he had paid for it. Aware that he had made a huge mistake, Rick obviously wasn't looking forward to telling the old man, and for a good reason. Although no money was lost yet, as Rick decided to just try to sell the car in the condition it was in, the old man was far from happy about his son being ripped off. You would think that by the time season 4 was filmed, the Harrisons would have learned that Chumley should never, under any circumstances, be left alone and without supervision. Even though more often than not he seems to be the scapegoat when something goes wrong at the shop, it is mostly well deserved. In one of the episodes from season 4, he was minding the shop all alone when a man walked into the shop carrying a vintage Gibson mandolin he picked up at a yard sale. He was hoping to make some money off of it so he could take his family on a trip to Ireland. With Rick and Corey out of reach, it was up to Chum to appraise the item. Encouraged by Rick drooling over another mandolin they had in the shop earlier, he decides to go above his purchase limit of $1,000 and seals the deal at $1,500. Even though the mandolin had the decals on the edges and the stamp of the Modern Script Gibson logo was visible through one of the F-holes, it turned out that it was one of the thousands of fakes that can be found across the US. Unfortunately for Chumley, who was worried about impressing Rick, he lost $1,400 since a friend and music shop owner later estimated the mandolin's worth at just 100 bucks. Despite making great efforts to abide by state and local laws, the gold and silver pawn shop staff has, unknown to them, occasionally taken in stolen property, like every other pawn shop. In Season 7's episode called Shekel and Hyde, Rick bought a 2,000-year-old Tyrian Shekel, a coin most historians believe was the mode of currency used in the infamous transaction of the 30 pieces of Judas, paid to Judas to betray Christ. A detective later came to the shop and informed them that the coin had been stolen, not by the seller who was featured in the episode, but by a previous owner of the coin. Nevertheless, the Harrisons were allowed to keep it as the original owner had been compensated by his insurance policy. But while they got lucky there, it turned out that Rick had paid way too much for the coin. Despite its rarity, a well-preserved shekel of tire would usually only be worth around $1200 and, because it had been cleaned, this one had lost a lot of value, so most of the $1600 that Rick had paid for the coin are probably lost forever. Back in Season 8, a studio musician called Vic Flick came to the pawn shop to sell a 1961 Fender Stratocaster. 
The guitar fascinated Rick from the get-go, as he recalled his early childhood memories of watching legendary Jimi Hendrix playing the iconic guitar. Apparently, the guitar model had some history since Leo Fender, the inventor, came up with it in 1954, and it hasn't changed much throughout the years. Rick decided to follow his hunch and bought the guitar for $55,000. However, as Vic Plick, the owner of the guitar is not really a legendary musician, most of the songs that had been recorded with this guitar were not exactly huge hits, apart from the James Bond theme. Naturally, the guitar just started collecting dust in the pawn shop with a price tag of $90,000, so Rick eventually decided to sell it in an auction. Much to his despair, the guitar sold for merely $20,000, leaving him with a loss of 35 k Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.